it's time. It's time. And now, it's time for Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you for joining us, and we appreciate it. Yes, we do. I never, Sharon does sometime, but I never take you for granted. <laughs> Sorry, say that, honey. I try not to very often. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say. The, 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 let me tell you, just tell you that we normally don't do this, but you'll, you'll be seeing this at another date. But while we are, we tape live to tape, so we don't stop down. It's, it looks like live all the time because it is live. I mean, after all, we're here live, okay? And <laughs> today's date is 12, 12, 12. While we're doing the program, yes, it is. And quite interesting. And I was told that it will not be like this for another hundred years. You're going to look a lot older and about that. Time. Last night, of all things, I, I turned on TBN, and it was accident. And <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and and a preacher was on there, and he was trying to raise his budget. <laughs> Because they're always behind in their money, always. And he had behind him these great big huge numbers, 12, 12, 12. And he was saying that God gave him, and he was telling all of the 12s in the Bible, <laughs> and how important that number is. And if you send an offering, I'm going to send you a cloth. And then he named all of these evangelists and well-known people that are going to be praying over all of these. 12, 12, 12. Are and you going to do that get, today? Uh, apparently, today is the day. Are you, you're not going to do it, though. My, you mean on my cloth? Yeah, you're not going to do it today. No. Okay, we have got to introduce this man oh, this because guy. this is going to be very yeah. interesting. Yeah. I don't think this guy would agree with the name me. of the of the book. You're gonna really like. Listen too. to this. Look at this. There it is on the screen. Because we've been, you know, everybody's yeah. been talking about this lately in the last few weeks. This is amazing. The Mayan calendar. We're gonna be All talking right, about that. I'm gonna that. try to get through this. Dr. Raymond C. Hudley has been a youth worker, pastor, missionary, seminary professor, Cambridge scholar, university professor, international speaker. He received his Master of Arts in Religion and hermeneutics from Asbury Theological Seminary, a Master of Letters in Theology from the University of Cambridge, wow. and a PhD in Systematic Theology from Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. That would be in Illinois. And we're going to pick his brain today is what we're going to do. Wow. <laughs> Sounds like that's yeah. what we're going to do. We rolled him in. <laughs> One big large brain sitting here. <laughs> He's six foot five. Uh, How are you? Doing well. Have you always yeah. been this tall? Uh, only until I was about, <laughs> since I was about 16. Are you uh -huh. serious? Yes, it was a terrible year. Were you, were you six a, inches in one year. Did everybody expect you to be a basketball player? Uh, that or a football player, one or the other. Yeah, were you? That's true. No. Looked like a, <laughs> no, you, you have to play football if you have a body like this. They won't leave you alone. I know it. I know. But uh, I, I didn't want to get but hurt. But you say, you, you had to say, God gave me this huge brain. And I'm going uh -huh. to use it for him. <laughs> Great book, by the uh, way. Thank yeah. you. And, and everybody watching, you, I, I know how fascinated you are about prophecy and end times or whatever. Yes. And uh, is it Michael Dorsnin? Drosnin. 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 Uh, predicted the end 2012. That's right. And we're coming close to it, aren't we? We are. It, it could happen any moment. Last guy that, <laughs> remember the guy that's on radio that keeps trying to yeah. come up with it and finally he got it yes. this last time? Yes. He said, I'm not going to do it anymore. I was glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Camping is his name. Camping, Harold yeah. Camping. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I mean, you know, and he's supposed to be a Bible scholar. Did, did you ever think you had, had it figured out? No. Never. And Even I, with all of your background. I read Harold Camping's book, and I don't believe he had it figured out either. Yeah, evidently not. Well, I, years ago, I interviewed Wisnot, uh, 88 Reasons Why He Was Coming Back in 88. 88. And he sat right there in that chair. So I just want you to know that right on this set. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> so, so. 
<laughs> and I told him he was wrong when I interviewed him. And, and he, I said, you got to promise me that after 1988, you could come back on and I want you to do a jig on my program because you're wrong. And he goes, I'm not wrong. I said, would you do that? And he, he promised. <laughs> he did come back. He can't. Did yeah. he do the jig? No, he didn't yeah. do the jig. Uh, okay. Now, well, why is all this talk about 2012? Why does everybody think it's going to end in 2012? There is a movement uh, in all over the world, uh, globally, yeah. about uh, some of the prophecies that have been given in the Mayan culture, in Nostradamus, in the WebBot program, in scripture, and in many other religions um, that say that 2012 is a decisive year. And the this harmonic conversion? Harmonic conversions. Uh, uh, there are conferences on harmonic conversions all over the world. What does that mean? Uh, that's a, Jose Arguelles is a Latin American, and his idea is that uh, in 2012, especially in, in December 21st, 2012, there will be a convergence of all harmonic powers in the world and a whole brand new uh, millennium will start in which there will be peace and harmony and love and understanding. And so he's had conferences all over the world uh, to talk about that. But the main thing is the Mayan calendar. Yeah. The Mayan calendar, they have a long calendar and that long calendar started uh, back 4,000 years. It is, uh, they were amazing astronomers, ama and they were amazing at, at calendar work. Um, they could predict eclipses uh, of the moon and sun. They made a calendar, and that calendar ends on December 21st, 2012. So uh, about 2006, a man named Daniel Pinchbeck wrote a book called 2012, The Return of the Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl is the serpent, the, the uh, feathered serpent god of the Mayans. And he said in that book that because the calendar ended on 2012, on December 21st, that they were predicting the end of the world. And so uh, there have been many, many books written since then emphasizing the same thing, and there are a lot of people who believe that that's exactly what's going to happen. Even scientists are into this. NASA yeah. scientists. There are scientists. So the, is there other different ways you think it's going to end? Yeah. Um, the NASA scientists, for example, talk about uh, natural events, you know, causes that will make this happen uh, in 2012. Uh, massive solar storms. Uh, you know, right now, the magnetic field around the Earth has been weakened, they say. In the South Atlantic, there's a, a, a break in the magnetic field. Is it the carbon? <laughs> they, they don't know what, yeah, they don't know what is causing it. It's expanding in the South Atlantic. And that is the magnet, the magnetic field is what protects us from the, the rays of the sun. Uh -huh. So they're saying if it continues to weaken and there are massive solar storms, which they're predicting for 2012, 2013, one of those storms can put off a, a, a cloud of burning gas with one billion tons of gas in it, it's traveling at one million miles an hour. If one of those hits the Earth and that magnetic field is not protecting us, it will have cataclysmic effects on this planet. It will heat up the core of the Earth which will cause super volcanoes to erupt all over the world. In fact, that, that's in the book, too, that you just wrote. The, yeah. The, the super volcano super volcanoes. in uh, Yellowstone. Yellowstone is one of the biggest ones. And really? uh, a lot of people who go to Yellowstone have no idea that they're standing on top of one of the biggest super volcanoes they, in the world. And they say it's overdue. Oh, oh yeah. It, 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 the pressure in Yellowstone is building. And uh, if that one were to go, the whole United States would be covered in ashes. It, it is that massive a volcano. So you have the, the solar storms heat up the core, cause earthquakes, cause uh, volcanoes to erupt. There are a lot of these super volcanoes that are under the ocean. So that would produce tsunami waves mm -hmm. that would just wipe out major cities all over the world. So Mount St. Helen gave us a little preview, didn't it? Yeah, but uh, the uh, the volcano at at, uh, at Yellowstone is 1,000 times stronger than Mount St. Helen. Wow. wow. So, you know, th this is that's what the scientists say. They say, yeah, there is a possibility of a chain of events happening that would just wipe out vast populations of the world. 
and might actually destroy the world. The Mayan people were, were vicious. They practiced human sacrifice, often children used, yeah. and they would rip out the heart of a sacrificial person. Yeah, their gods demanded blood. And so they would take their enemies, uh, their captives, and they would stretch them out, cut their, their chest open, pull their hearts out while it's still beating. They wanted it beating. And then set it on fire and offer it to their gods. They were the most bloodthirsty civilization in their time. But they were also some of the most amazing scientists of their time. So you, you have that kind of mixture. It, I, I just read a book recently by a man named Hitchcock and he said, uh, you know, a lot of the things that the Mayans believed, they believed because they took drugs. They took hallucinogenic drugs. Mm -hmm. And he really believed strongly because of the shamans, uh, you know, invoking spirits, that a lot of what they believed is just from demons, that demons influenced mm -hmm. their culture to believe this. And the amazing thing is, for years, nobody understood why their civilization died but we finally found out the reason it died is because they threw all those bodies into the water system that they were drinking and it killed oh. them. Oh. So wow. the, the Mayans, you know, their, their view of life and of uh, how to live life was based on sacrifice and the calendar. And they studied the stars. They were amazing astronomers. The problem with using that to say that that's the end of the world, uh, there are two problems. One is they had a cyclical view of history. They did not have a linear view. Mm -hmm. So for Mayans, 2012 is not the end, it's the beginning of a new cycle. Mm -hmm. and, and two, there are prophecies in Mayan literature for the year 4004 AD. Oops. So, so if they thought that that was the end of the world, Just those in case prophecies they were wrong. would not exist. Kind of like Wiznet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Same, same kind in of In case thing. we're wrong. So, you know, the, the, the Mayan elders themselves say that the, this is just poppycock. It, it is not what they believe. It is not part of their system. Mm -hmm. They are cyclical. They believe that things continue to go around. Why do we, we secular even as well as Christians, buy into this stuff? Why? Well, first of all, it sells a lot of books. <laughs> sure does. And you know, uh, there are a lot of people who want to exploit this kind of thing to make money. Mm -hmm. um, Is that why you did this book? No. Now, tell me the truth. Actually, I, was, I was begged to, to write this book by the publisher. Um, we felt that, you know, with, with all of this going on, that, you know, the 2012 movie came out right, right uh, when I wrote the book, we felt like it was such a great opportunity to say to people, look, this is possible. You know, th mm -hmm. I mean, this really could happen. I'm, I'm not talking about Mayans and Nostradamus and those flaky things, but scientifically, this is possible. Yeah. Th this could happen in this, in this yeah. earth. Only and, if God's plan is yeah, in effect. And, and yeah. God knows when that's gonna happen, yeah. but we thought, you know, this is a great opportunity to say to people, be ready. Mm. Be, well, we all be know ready. the earth isn't going to last forever. That's right. You it's know, wearing it's out like a, like a set of clothes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So we felt like it was a great opportunity. And uh, I have received letters from many, many people who've accepted the Lord after reading this book. I tell you, the cover, Will the World End in 2012, that will get your attention. Mm -hmm. it, it has. And uh, thousands of people have bought the book. And I have received a lot of letters from them. That, and, and this is interesting reading. I mean, you've done a lot of work Thank you. Uh, inside of this book. And uh, now explain CERN, C-E-R-N. Yeah. In, uh, in Switzerland, there is a collider, which is a, a nuclear device that has two tracks on it. And what those tracks do is they send protons at the, almost the speed of light until they hit each other and explode. That's how they collide. And what they're trying to do, they're trying to duplicate the Big Bang. They're oh. trying to show what, how everything was created. Mm -hmm. The problem with it is nobody knows what will happen when they get this up to full power. The first time they turned it on in 2008, they, there was a, a, a leak of more than a ton of helium that came out of the machine and almost exploded. So 
So they're it, playing with something. This is a very dangerous machine, mm -hmm. and, and it could produce things that we don't know. In fact, there's a lot of people that are trying to stop this from oh, yeah. being tested. There are scientists who have taken out court injunctions against this to stop it because it could produce black holes. Yeah. And black holes, you know, when they touch matter, they destroy it. So this, this machine could produce black holes that would go throughout the whole Earth and destroy things. Nobody knows. In fact, one of the scientists uh, at CERN said, we really don't know what we're doing, oh my but goodness. we hope it will work out. <laughs> Just to prove the Big Bang. Yeah, and also to try to understand a little bit more about physics and how the world works together and how the, the forces that created the universe actually took place. That's their purpose. Nostradamus. Nostradamus. How does that play into any of this? Yeah, 16th century, Nostradamus wrote uh, a thousand quatrains, four line poems, and he prophesied all kinds of things. Uh, they're very vague, they're very difficult to understand. Uh, he. You can interpret whatever you want. You can really, yeah, it's kind of like an ink blot. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's you, right. can, you can see anything you want in it. But uh, a few years ago, they discovered uh, 80 watercolors that said they were from Nostradamus. Now, nobody knows whether they really were or not. Um, but those seven of those uh, 80 watercolors talk about the end of the world. And they talk about the end of the world uh, in images. In, yeah. in pictures. Yeah, you, you, your yeah. book. Yeah, you can get because I, I. I mean, he's brilliant, but <laughs> give him a book in front of him. Too. I appreciate yeah. it. Um, there is a towering, uh, burning tower, which yeah. uh, many nine eleven. Uh, there's a woman threatened by a blind archer, and that's kind of the symbol they say of impending doom. There is a learned man with a book of life and, and a veil covering him. Uh, which they talk about the fact that our generation, everything will be revealed to us finally. Uh, there's a serpent with a crescent moon, which the crescent moon oh, yeah. is the symbol of Islam. Yeah. Um, there's a wild man with a blank book of life and a veil, and this is the idea that everything will be revealed and then life will be over. It will, it will cease. There's a tree attacked by a slanted club um, which they interpret to be the world will tilt on its axis and the magnetic field will be destroyed. But the biggest one is there's a scorpion with a spiral between its claws. And this is the one that is the biggest one for the Nostradamus experts. They believe that this, this scorpion with the, his claws out like this with a spiral in the middle is a symbol of the galactic plane of, this, of the universe, the solar, solar system and the universe, and that because it has the, the picture of a scorpion in it, it is predicting that there will be an end to the, to the earth. It will be destroyed. Now, you know, <laughs> anybody could take the seven same drawings and come up with totally different, yeah. you know, anything from it. Uh, it's very vague. And, in Nostradamus work, we have this thing called retrodiction, not prediction, but retrodiction. And that is when the translators and the editors take Nostradamus work, and because they know what happened afterward, they put those details back into the text. Oh my. So it's very unstable. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it really is not an uh, effective tool to understand anything, really. Yeah. It's, it really is pretty flaky. It, it kind of makes you realize that the Word of God is inspired. Amen. Total difference. Yes. Qualitative Total. difference. Yes. Because all of the ones involved in the Word of God, yet it's all together. Well, you look at a prophecy in God's Word yeah. and see the detail and the amazing detail yeah. that's given and then the, how that's fulfilled in detail, exactly right. like the Word of God says, you see the difference between false prophecy and real prophecy. Wow. Nancy Leader? Nancy Leader is a lady who claims that when she was a young girl, she was taken away uh, by Zetas, aliens from another planet. Zeta. Who, uh, they, they, uh, <laughs> they put a device in her brain, she says, so that they could communicate with her. And what they have communicated to her is that there's a planet X 
that is orbiting around the, the solar system. Yeah. And one of these days, she says December 21st, it will collide with the Earth and destroy us. You know. So it's amazing it's the same day. Oh yeah, she came up with, you know, some, some yeah. of these <laughs> are not so amazing because they play off each other. Yeah. You know. So, so has, she, has she been certified insane? Uh, n not that I know of, but most people would consider that what she's saying is insane. And NASA has said that Planet X does not exist. Wow. There's no such thing. And you can mm -hmm. find her on websites Zeta, Z-E-T-A, talk. That's right. Because she's still talking to them, apparently. <laughs> she's still talking. <laughs> okay. So she had it implanted, you know, it's like, like the implant, you know, in the dogs. You know, That's right. So you don't lose them. Uh, web bot, B-O-T predictions. Web bot. Yeah, there's this study. Uh, they have spiders on the internet. And uh, I'm, uh, this is a practice, you know, it's a, a fairly common thing. They send these spiders out over the internet and they program them to collect certain data. So if, if yeah, they want to take your name, Herman, they just put Herman Bailey into one of these spiders and then it goes out and every single person on the internet that mentions you, they pull that data in and record wow. it. So what they've done is they've, they've sent these spiders out to look for 2012 devastation, doomsday, total destruction. And of course, they've found that because people are talking about this all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, again, th this is... Um, but, but look at the uh, <laughs> predictions. I mean, you're... Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. they're, and they're accurate. Well, the things that they say they yeah. came up with. Yeah, okay. And again, this is the problem. Yeah. Big, big. It's just an internal thing that mm -hmm. they say that they found these things before they happened. Uh, the, the question is, was it really before they happened? Mm -hmm. And uh, because what we have here is uh, information about what people are interested you in. You have to be gullible. I think you'd have to be extremely yeah. gullible. Yeah. What do they say in some of those? Oh, they, they talk about the September 11 attacks, uh, crash of the American Airline Flight 587. And it, um, th this was before it happened, right? Oh, that's what they say. Yeah. yeah. I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Uh, the blackout in 2003, the earthquake in 2004, Hurricane Katrina, Dick Cheney's hunting accident. Okay. That was very important. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, again, I, I would classify that, you know, in, in my own theological terminology as flaky. Yes. Uh, it, it's uh, actually we say in theology it's hooey. <laughs> uh, it, it, I, I can it, understand I that. I don't believe there's <laughs> no. any basis to it. But I'm telling you, because I, I get some of the books and I watch some of the programs, but there's a lot of flaky stuff in Christianity. Oh yeah, unfortunately. And there are some uh, top-notch evangelists who have bought into the December 21st date. Now what is that, you would think that people would be falling on their knees then and accepting Christ if they're thinking it's going to end on the 21st of Some of them December. have said that, yeah. Some of them have said the only solution to this problem is divine intervention. And these are not believers who have said that. Um, there are many people who believe this and, and are scared to death mm -hmm. and are getting right with God. Because, and that's, I'm sorry that it takes something like this to yeah, do that. Um, well, Wisnet told me that 17 people documented trusted Christ because of his book. Yeah. I, you know, there are many people, and I'll, I'll be honest to say, I wrote this book in such a way that people would get a little bit nervous about the possibility because I want them to think about Mm -hmm. You know, Eternity. you're just trying to scare the hell out of people. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, uh, and literally. That's right. You know, I, right. I, however, <laughs> I, I want people to face the fact, and it's not just because of this stuff. I mean, everybody's world is going to an end. Sure. Yeah, sure. Everybody's going to die. Could, could end today for you. Uh, you know, we could, the whole planet could be wiped out tomorrow. My, I may die tomorrow. I need to be ready to face mm -hmm. God. I, I need to be to make sure that I, I know in whom I believed and yeah. that my eternal life is secure. Well, Islamic prophecies are in there. Oh, yeah. I mean, right? They have some prophecies about the end of the world as well. They don't date them. But they do have prophecies about the end of the world and fire and earthquake. It's almost like our Armageddon. Very similar. Yes. Very similar. Mm. In fact, many of these converge. Uh, you know, the, the whole idea, well, you read the book of Revelation, 
and you see, yeah. you know, fire coming from the sky and earthquakes mm -hmm. and destruction and pestilence and all the things that are described there. If you saw the 2012 movie, you would almost see a depiction of the book of Revelation. Amazing. Um, many of these converge in, in that kind of scenario. And the, and the fact is, people need to be aware that yeah. if, uh, if the book of Revelation is talking about the Great Tribulation, there are no prophecies that need to be fulfilled for that to happen yeah. tomorrow. Uh, that could happen tomorrow, December 21st, next year, or 30 years from it now. It is going to happen. It will happen. Mm -hmm. And people need to be prepared for that. Yeah. Share Christ, that's your camera right there. Somebody needs to know that they don't have to go to hell. Amen. They can go to heaven. Amen. I think the most important thing about all of these topics is just one principal idea, and that is what Scripture says. And what Scripture says is, be ready. Be ready. Uh, your life may end tomorrow. It may go on for 30 years. But regardless of when that happens to you, there is a chance right now today right. that you can give your life to Jesus Christ. Trust Him. Repent of your sins. Ask Him to come into your life and be your Savior and Lord. And you, if you do that, you will know that the day you leave this earth, for whatever reason, you will step from this earth into the most joyous mm. celebration of real life that anyone could ever imagine. So today, I, I beg you in the name of the Lord, if you've not received Christ as your Savior, give yourself to Him today. Find a church that teaches the Bible. And for Christians, what would happen if all of us as Christians lived as if there's one year left on this mm -hmm. earth? What difference would it make in our lives? I really believe God can use this to bring us all to a new commitment to Him. Wow. Amen. And what He's just said, yeah. it's all right here. It's in the Word of God. It is so important that we trust this and not some fiction, Nostradamus, or predictions of the Mayan, or all of the things that we can read about. It's right here in the book. You, you will absolutely be fascinated and mesmerized like I was when you start reading chapter after chapter, because it's the kind of book you will want to finish right off the bat. But let me tell you, and you quote this, yeah. the Word of God, in here over and over again. Mm -hmm. But this is the proof of your salvation if you've trusted Him today. Because every need you have, right here, He will meet it. Amen. Trust Him. God bless you. Bye-bye. is Joanne Bunsen. For years I would read the Bible and I would always have questions. I would want to know why did they do that? And then when I got an answer I'd want to know, well, what does that mean to me? And, and how will it affect my life and my relationships? Well, I'm privileged every day to teach for a half hour on this network in a program called Digging In. And what I found is exactly what I'm going to be sharing with all of you who have those same kinds of questions. At age 34, Peter Herrick joined the Navy Reserve and was deployed to Iraq. When the mortar round hit, I was completely knocked out. When he returned home, Paralyzed Veterans of America was there to help. We advocate, we educate, and we process claims through the VA, and we follow that claim from the beginning to the end. Without Paralyzed Veterans of America, I really honestly believe I'd still be in the hospital. You can help our Paralyzed Veterans. To learn more, visit pva.org.
can a known poison that exists in our food supply, our medications, and sometimes even in the air we breathe?